How did this happen? Well, first I was a dog walker, and uh, I was called the Mexican guy who can walk a pack of dogs before they call me the dog whisperer, you know? And I walked dogs off leash. I didn't know it was illegal to walk dogs um, in America mm -hmm. uh, off leash, you know? And so to me, it was the land of the free. So dogs have birthday parties, so they should <laughs> be able to walk off leash. Uh, I grew up that way. I grew up in a farm, you know, knowing that walking a dog should be off leash. So by being a dog walker, I developed uh, uh, a respect or a trust uh, with American people. Mm -hmm. And then they said, well, can you work with my dog? So then I opened a dog psychology center. And that's what the story was. <laughs> now, there's a difference that you've got owners and you've got dogs. You've got to train dogs. You've also got to train owners, presumably. How much well, the, of it is their responsibility? In, in, in the beginning, I wanted to learn from Americans how to train dogs after watching Lassie and Rain Tin Tin. And that's, <laughs> I, felt, I thought that all people in America had this, the same thing, mm. Lassies and Rain Tin Tins. But then I saw people walking in the streets with their dogs. And, <laughs> and, uh, so that was unusual yeah. for me because in my country or where I'm from, I, I never s experienced that, you know. So then that's when I said, well, instead of me training dogs, I'm going to train people, right? And that's, that's when I said I train people and rehabilitate dogs. So uh, well, how long does the process take? You take an, an owner comes to you as having problems with their dog. Yeah. How quickly can you make a difference to what they do? Well, for me and the dog, it's easy. Uh, but for me and the human, it takes a little while because a lot of times they want to... <laughs> a lot of times people don't want to let go of the bad habits, you mm -hmm. know? So for example, you ask somebody, uh, how do you feel? I'm fine. See, they don't recognize they're not calm, you yeah. know? They're just saying the work, fine. The dog doesn't know what you do for a living. He just knows how you live your life. So when I come into a situation, I am calm and confident, right? Most of the people are... He's not listening to me. Yeah. I, I do everything you say, I read the books, and he doesn't listen to me. Yeah. So, so, so they're tense and frustrated by the time I come to. So to get the human away from that state of mind it takes a little while. But your techniques are very controversial. Many say your techniques are old-fashioned. You punish dogs, you hit them. Oh. Um, I've seen you punch a dog in the throat to get it to behave. And most people, I'd say myself, that for me is totally unacceptable as a way of training a dog. Well, obviously, I uh, respectfully disagree with that. It's not a punch, it's a touch. Right? I and watched the video of it. If somebody touched me like that, I would hurt. Oh. It was, you went for the throat and you punched the dog back and the dog then bit you and held onto your hand. Well, it's, it's a touch. It, it looks probably to you, but it's a touch. In, having watched quite a lot of boxing matches, it looked to me like <laughs> something Henry Cooper could have delivered. <laughs> but obviously that's not the goal to punch the dog. The, the, the goal is just to snap the brain out of it, right? And, and so you can then provide energy and body language. But you also work with electric shocks through collars and spikes on collars, spiked collars that, that really hurt them. You know, this is pretty barbaric treatment. I, we wouldn't treat children like this nowadays. Right, We'd be right. locked up if we did. So what's your reasoning behind treating dogs like this? Well, there is a certain situation for that purpose, you know. Um, at the time that I come to a situation like that, the dog is already wearing that tool, you know. So when I came to America, I didn't use tools. We don't have pet shops where I'm from. So, we, so when you come into a situation where people are already using the tools and they're not knowing how to use it, that's all I'm doing. I'm just showing how to use it properly. But there's a great, you just explained to me earlier on that people can't do what you do because they've got the wrong attitude. Right. And yet they watch you doing it. They'll go and try it. And by your own admission, they won't be able to do it as well as you right. do. So there's a grave danger that they will maltreat their dogs right. hugely because they're not doing it, you would say, properly. Well, that's what I say, consult a professional. That's mm. the key. You know, so but you you're showing educated. them on television, they're going to try it, aren't they? Well, uh, unfortunately, right, just like in a cigarette, they say, don't, you know, smoke skills and people still doing it. Uh, uh, you can only help people, but you that, know, to but understand But that, that sounds a bit like an excuse. Can I just read you, we, we've, 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 I have to say, we've never had so many complaints about a guest. Right. Uh, so I've got points I need to make to you. You know, we could have said, right, we won't have him on. Yeah, You're yeah, yeah. on, because I want to put these points right. to you. Pain and distress to dogs, mm -hmm. as people talk about, copycat training, the risk to owners. Perhaps one statement I can read out is the RSPCA, the Royal Satisfaction of Cruelty to, Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, mm -hmm. who say ad aversive training techniques, which have been seen to be used by Caesar Milan, can cause pain and fear mm -hmm. for dogs and may worsen their behavioural problems. The RSPCA believes that using such techniques is unacceptable, nor are they necessary to change dog behaviour for the better when other dog trainers use reward-based methods mm -hmm. to train dogs very effectively. 
Well, my goal is to teach people how to become calm in the first place, how to prevent from ever going into that situation. So the, the, the whole concept or the idea of uh, trust your instincts is for you to reconnect yourself with your natural way of being, so you don't have to use tools. But would you ever stop using these aggressive ways yourself? I mean, you still do it. You still do it yourself. You know, you still use the foot to, to kick the dog in the soft underbelly behind the rib cage. You still use these, you know, the electric shock collars, the spike collars, the, the punching in the throat. Until you stop doing that and say there are better techniques of, of bringing up your dog, of training your dog, people are going to copy you. I, I do use food. I do use food. And, and one situation, uh, actually, a parrot helped me to achieve the goal that this lady wanted. This lady wanted to kiss the dog. And the do every time she comes in near the dog, the dog bites her face. So when I came to her house, I saw how the parrot was in control. So I said, put the little parrot on your shoulder. Now go kiss the dog. So they were very respectful to the parrot. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So it's not just treats that you can use. You can use your environment to actually achieve what you want. But does it not worry you? You can't get pleasure out of hitting a dog, surely. I don't do it out of pleasure. I do it to snap the brain out of it. But there are other means, people say there are other means, experts say there are other means of doing that. And we've got a, you know, you say dogs are pack animals, for instance. There's a professor here of, of anthrozoology who says dogs do not set up wolf type packs. They don't organize themselves in the way wolves do. Dogs are not striving, in other words, for household domination. Mm. Well, uh, the whole point of family is a pack. So the dog uh, obviously finds himself very comfortable. But we comfortable don't beat our children and we're a pack, if you like, if you think about but it. It's that a family. Way. Yeah. It's, it's a family. It's, it's, it's semantics. You know, it's, it's, it's the word, if you don't like the word, that's fine. It's the whole point. It's, it's um, to create a family. It, I've seen many times how a, a cat controls yeah. a Rottweiler. Yeah. At the moment the dog comes, the cat goes, Faka! and from that point on, th that cat is in control. So that, that cat actually listens, that dog actually listens to the cat and now he's human. Your methods, I've no doubt, will continue to be controversial, but thank you for coming Thanks and explaining Thanks for letting me be here. Ladies and gentlemen, Milan. I'll be back tomorrow with Olivier Ward and the actor Matthew Kelly. Strictly is Anton Dubeck and the band of the Blues and Royals will be performing. It's not to be missed with the fan trail entry. That's tomorrow at three. Bye-bye for now. What has Dad been up to? A family man meets an untimely end in the heart of his own home. But things aren't, aren't quite as rosy as they might. First at scene. DCI Banks tonight at night. Next, it's off to France for May the Best House Win. I believe sponsors the Alan Ditchmarsh Show. Oh no, the impassable door. All we have to do is find a secret artifact. No, and no, no. We wait until the full moon and then we speak the ancient chant. This one just needs a whole lot of dynamite. Hello there. Lock open.